Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for this Lexio on the go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our scripture readings are taken from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 5, and Luke 1, verses 37 through 47. These are the readings for Friday in the ember week of Advent. Um, first, I want to go to Isaiah, but uh, before I do that, I want to stress um, that the key kind of words or phrases that stood out to me during this Lexio Divina were breath and voice. And so, and voice and breath go together. So, I, I think it's St. John Damascene um, that said that one of his kind of analogies of the Trinity is that in order to have words, you have to have an idea in your head. So, for instance, if I have the idea of strawberry ice cream, okay, that, that idea is in my head. That word is in my head first. And then the word is going to be spoken. But in order for the word to be spoken, strawberry ice cream, there has to be a force. There has to be a voice and a breath that goes with that. So, in other words, you are going to be hearing the vibration of my voice and my breath. So, if I were to put my hand up here, strawberry ice cream. I can actually feel that vibration. So what do we have here? We have the idea, the actual word, the, the voice, um, and the breath. And those things are happening simultaneously. Uh, when I say strawberry ice cream, you have the idea, the word, the breath. Uh, this is like the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's very Trinitarian. So just speaking, just breathing, but particularly the word. The word is important because every time we speak, um, and, and, our, and our words are heard, especially if it's in person. That has to do, it's very Trinitarian in nature. We know that, of course, uh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But the Word and voice and breath are so important to our faith. So I want to share with you, just with that in mind, kind of keep that in mind as we go through these scripture verses. First from Isaiah, He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. This, of course, is talking about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. This means that the word of God, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, is going to pierce through the evils in our society. This is why when the church speaks the truth, and when an individual Christian speaks the truth, evil can't stand it. It's, it's just like this piercing that goes right through. This is why good people are always, uh, evil people always try to silence good people. This is why evil prevails when good people remain silent. We must continue to speak the word. When, this is why the gospel must be preached. It must be heard. Um, and we must do this even with our last breath. We know this, that Jesus Christ is suffocating on the cross, right? Crucifixion is actually a suffocation. So the one that gives us breath, right, that breathed life into us, our very creator is now being, the breath of life is being taken from him on the crucifixion. But yet, even with his very last breath, what is he doing? Speaking to us. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do, right? Into your hands I commend my spirit. And those, those seven last words that he says, those words and those breath is very important. And it will continue to be the word and the breath of, of Jesus Christ that will conquer evil. Um, this, is, this is really important when, when we look at the baptismal rite. So in the baptismal rite, uh, this, there's a, a part called the um, es, esufflation, I think. E-X-S-U-F-F-L-A-T-I-O-N. You'll see it in the notes. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But the priest breathes three times on the child in the form of a cross saying, Depart from him, unclean spirit, and give place to the Holy Ghost, the Consoler. So again, you know, the priest would be breathing on the child three times, right? In the sign of the cross saying, Depart from him, unclean spirit, and give place to the Holy Ghost, the Consoler. So what is happening here? The priest, who is in the person of Christ, is using his breath and his word to drive out the wicked, to drive out the evil, just like it was said, just as Isaiah had prophesied. And then um, I want to stress also in, in the Gospel of Luke, Luke 1, 
how powerful the voice is. For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salvation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. This is Elizabeth speaking to Mary. For as soon as the voice of thy salvation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. So how powerful it was the voice of Mary um, in the ears of Elizabeth. So powerful was that sound, that voice of salvation, that it caused John the Baptist to leap inside the womb. So here we have how powerful a voice and breath is in our society. How powerful that a voice and breath can drive out the demons from a soul. How powerful it is that the voice of salvation and breath can, can make a baby leap within the womb of a mother um, just at a greeting. And how powerful it is at the Mass when the, the priest will actually say, look, uh, hold the, the host, which is bread, very close to the mouth and say, this is my body. So much so that the breath and the word is, is actually hitting the elements making that bread, this is my body, into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And then into the chalice, which has wine. This is my blood, the chalice of my blood, the new and the everlasting covenant, right? That breath, that voice, those commands, those words of Jesus Christ. So it is the words of Jesus Christ and the breath of Jesus Christ that actually gives us the Eucharist. And it is the Eucharist, which is the antidote, right? Um, for the poison that is out there, the poison of sin, um, the poison of indifference, and, and all the different things that are out there. And so we stay close to the breath of Jesus. We stay close to the voice of Jesus. We stay close to the Word of God, the Word of God in Scripture, the Word of God made flesh in, in the Eucharist. We stay close. Um, what is so important, I think, in our time is that we see um, the voice and breath being suppressed. So if we think of the masks that we have during COVID, you know, how does this muffle, you know, muffles my breath, it muffles my, my voice. Um, it, it keeps you from seeing my lips. Um, what does it say in Isaiah? It'll be from his lips, right? He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, the mouth, how important the mouth is. And with the breath of his lips, you know, you cover this, you can't see my mouth. You can't, you can't feel my breath and you can't see my lips. And so in a, I know I understand that the masks are there for medical reasons or whatever. You can kind of go back and forth. But spiritually, spiritually speaking, we can never muzzle ourselves. Spiritually speaking, we must allow the word, the breath, the lips of Jesus Christ to be seen by this world, to be heard and to be felt by this world. And this is, of course, the job of every single Christian um, at our baptism. We are we put on Christ, thus becoming prophet, priest and king, prophet to speak right the word of God so that his breath can be known, um, his lips can be seen, his voice can be heard, especially in a particular way. This is to the order, the holy orders, the bishops in particular, to continue that teaching office of the church, the teaching office of Jesus Christ, his mission. Um, and so I do think the masks do affect this kind of uh, in a way because we aren't seeing mouths, we aren't hearing clearly. And, uh, and, and, and if that's happening on the physical sense, it also can be transferred to the spiritual sense. So let us always hear the voice of God. Let us always feel that breath, the breath that gives us life. Let us look at his lips and allow us to allow that word to drive out the evils that are around us. Thank you for joining me for this Lexio on the go. Please take the time to visit linkedliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. And please check out our online school, linkedliturgy.teachable.com. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.